Welcome back. This is Brighter Morning with Bo on MCTV, Multicultural TV in Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean region, beaming on several channels. And our guest this morning is Mr. Ray Hallman. Um, let's talk with him and get a perspective on life, Trinidad and Tobago and the world. Hello? Hello? Hi, morning, Ray. Yeah. Ray, let me hear your voice so that we can tell that we're hearing. Yes, I can right. barely hear Ray. your voice, though. Huh? You, I can you, barely hear your voice. You you can't hear me. Check the volume on your uh, hello on your phone. On my phone, yeah. All right. Okay, we all right. You can hear me now. Barely. All right, but let, let's talk and um, take okay. his volume up so that we can hear him. All right, and uh, give him a full screen there. Let me talk to him. Here's the volume. Yeah. yeah. All right, don't keep the camera moving about. You have to keep the camera steady. All right? And let's see your face. All right. Yeah. All right, let's, let's, um, don't be conscious about that. Just talk to me now. Let the cam let let's give a yes. full let's give a full. Well, I hope that we get the volume up a little more. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Let him off. Let him hold the full but, screen. But can you? Can you hear me? I can hear you clearly. Lift his volume. All right. Can you hear me? Who? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yes, I'm hearing you, but I'm not seeing you. You move the camera. Yes. Right. I'm seeing See, you now. Put him on the full screen. All right. Just talk to me. That's all. Forget about all the technology and so on. Talk to me. Um, all right. Yeah, we're dealing with technology. We don't know how to deal with technology now. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's let, let's okay. talk. That's fine. Yes. Well, not nice. Huh? Yes. Yeah. What's the problem there? Huh? Yeah. What's the problem there? Ray, can you can you say something to me? Okay. Yes, I'm seeing you loud and some lovely buildings in the background too. All right, okay. Well, you recently yeah. got, you recently yeah. were honored by the University of the West Indies uh, who conferred on you an honorary doctorate. Tell me something. I mean, this is a rare um, thing that the university does every year. Uh, how did you feel... <laughs> when you went up to shake the chancellor's hand and to receive your honorary doctorate? How did you feel? Well, you know, actually it was done by Shirley, so I didn't get to shake Anybody's hand. But uh, I, was viewing, I was viewing the, uh, the speech by Elizabeth uh, was the World Cup? Yes. I I viewed this one. I, I felt very proud you know, that my so it fits to honor me. Yeah. And uh, so that's it. I was very I was very proud and happy. But you know I take everything in stride. I so I said, you know, well I I hard not to honor, just to to try and perfect my craft. 
to bring music to people, to make them feel about themselves, to enjoy. That's why I do music, to, to inspire people to think good thoughts, to make them listen. It takes a lot because I try to make my music last, you know, I try to have it, to, to give it some longevity. So this was going through my mind, you know, as I heard her speak, and she really did a wonderful presentation. And it just, that's it, you know, I, I, I was very proud. And I was thought, thought about my mom, who would, if she, if she alive, you know, what, what would she have been thinking? You know, about all my family and friends who had been such a great support base to me over the years, you know. And uh, this award is for all of them. You, you sound quite emotional about it, uh, in the sense that the citation about you moved you. Is that right? Yes, yes. The citation was excellent, and uh, it was obvious that the lady put a lot of work into it. You know, she really studied and her career quite thoroughly. So I was happy about that because you know. Sometimes people don't really go into all that detail and don't try to be accurate. She was very accurate in everything she said. And the way she presented it, it seemed as if she was at ease because she was she became so familiar with the material. And uh, that was it it did not sound like somebody was just doing something because they had a job to do. It sounded like she was. It sounded to me like she had enjoyed the research and enjoyed presenting it. That meant a lot to me. Yeah, because well, she comes from an artistic family. I mean, her father yes, yes. is the great Nobel laureate poet Derek Walcott. Elizabeth, right. Elizabeth herself, whom I know well, is mm -hmm. not just a sound academic but uh, uh, um, a creative person in her own right, you know? And somebody like that would be very sensitive towards a life of creativity such as yours. And I think that is what might have moved you because she herself was presenting you with this sensibility as an artist and someone who had lived and known the quirks and challenges and uh, um, disparate moods and sensibilities of her artist father, Derek Walcott. All right, you think, yes. you think any of that description uh, describes you? I think so. You know, when I heard the name, I said, yes, I'm in good hands here. <laughs> and when, <laughs> when it was over, when I, saw it, I called her the following day, and I thanked her so much, you know. And I'm saying to her that I did not expect anything less of her learning, and she offered it, you know. I said, yes, you know, your father's a man I admire very much. I was familiar with some of his work. I played a little carib. Everything tied in. Yeah. Quite fully. I said, books and so of the career and the life is the work. You have to be in it or be around someone who's in it to really know. It takes a toll on you, huh? Yeah. It takes a. emotion as well to the artist. Yeah. I mean, maybe some people are able to to do creative things more easily. Yeah. But when I'm doing a piece, it takes some time. Because as I said before to you, I'm not doing it for a day or a week. Yeah. But tell me something about that toll that it takes on you as a creative person. 
there are two sides of you in the creative process. One is the person who creates music, who writes music, who composes. Um, and secondly, there is the panis who plays an instrument with great, great delicacy, which is what has really, really catapulted you to the top of the pan playing world. What is the toll that take this takes from the artist? Well, it takes a toll on your family as well. You become, while you're creating, become very, should I say, you take away from everything else. You have to you have to focus. So many things you have to divide your attention between your family or your friend and then this endeavor. It also makes you be thought of a time by people who don't know you well as if you are a support you have to communicate it is not many times in the street I'm walking or I'm driving but I'm thinking so as if I, it's as if I'm like a horse with blinkers on <laughs> I'm seeing straight ahead <laughs> so uh, some people have said you know yes yes my mind is going you know so some people say, you know, I didn't pass me straight. I, no, I didn't pass you straight intentionally. I, I just didn't see. So, you know, you can look at somebody and I'm not saying you can look at somebody but you're so preoccupied that uh, you don't see it. But the following, the, when next you meet them, you explain them and they are. You know, because you really need to be sympathetic towards and that is focusing trying to idea you're trying to think about this thing piece this line or whatever it is and it calls for extreme focus yeah. if I, as, as i'm a player if i'm playing i'm finished practicing it doesn't take as much out of me you know the mental part of trying to write a piece to arrange a piece and put everything in place. That draws more out of you. Sometimes uh, you just you, you can't sleep. You take a sleep. <laughs> but with the panya, I remember I used to when when you're arranging in the panya at night and I get home, let's see it's my time which is more exhausting thing. I can't fall asleep. Yeah. I take time to fall asleep because it's like winding. You're so keyed up. You're on one and uh, you, 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 you go to late to get up in the morning to go to college to teach for seven. Yeah. Sometimes I, I don't like to remember this because yeah. it's very painful. It was very, very painful, not emotionally, but on my body I felt so it was an extra effort I felt so tired and uh, so it took a toll over the years I remember Pantin, Max Principal that great man when he became Minister of Education he uh, he called me and he said I'm going to help you I'm going to, I'm going to allow you to have some days off during the season because this I said this it said it's not me and I see that it's it's really too much. So that was a that was the only time that I would do music full time for a couple of weeks during the season. But to tell both to tell you the truth, it helped me tremendously. You know, just, yes. all the other rangers were going to bed and getting up in the morning whenever they felt to get up and then do their music. I had to get up. So that recovery time I did. Have. So that's that I think about it. It really. So, thank God I'm still alive and I have all my senses. Uh, 
and uh, some of us, one of them, but I won't call his name, he went to an early grave and speak to him about it, saying, you know, you're wearing yourself out and that's going to take a toll. Uh, eventually he passed way before his time. So I'm fortunate. I was the only one who had to go to work on 7.30 <clears throat> and when I got hooked, and straight to bed, you know, a little rest. Because so I'm trying, I'm taking a little rest because I know I have to, to have to work to, to pay, you know. Yeah. That was the schedule. Uh, I had a wife and young children at the time. So in the morning, I have to get up to drop them to school. And then, but nothing good comes easily, as you know, Bo. Whatever feel you're in, you have to strive. And, uh, you know, Vin no, Nintendo Vinci is the, the, the motto of uh, Fatima. Right? Well, I went to, I was a classy words, you know, but I taught at Fatima for 50 years. So they used to hear them sing, sing in the college song and, and, and in the school, Vin Nintendo Vinci is by striving your conquer. So whatever feel you're in, and you, just, you just have to put in the work. And, uh, in a sense, I would have to say I didn't work a day because I enjoyed it. <laughs> yes. I enjoyed tell it. It's just that. The... Tell me about that a Sorry? little bit. How did how did you enjoy teaching at Fatima? Because I mean, you are Spanish specialist. You taught Spanish, no? I taught Span Spanish and history. Yes. And eventually Spanish. You know, I started off teaching Spanish and history, and eventually it came to so just Spanish. Yes. How, how was it for you as a teacher? How did you enjoy being a teacher with all these young uh, fellas uh, in the system, having grown up in a QRC environment, basically, which I think in a, in a way shaped you. We'll talk about that in a minute. But talk to me about your teaching life and career. Well, I think from, from the very moment I, I had been teaching in the Paniyad. That That is a form of teaching, you know. But when I got into this school system now, <clears throat> I just felt like uh, this was something natural because I love to impart knowledge to people. This is just who I am. I love doing it. And I find myself still teaching, even though I'm not in a school. Yes. <laughs> but as I said, I went into teaching and, and, me, and for my first new form six, is a piece of cake, right? Form six. But I the challenge. I didn't really have a chance to settle in like the two, two I three, or form four, <clears throat> form six classes. And what was what I like Yeah, I think you just stuck there. It's probably the um let's take a break and see if we can get him back. Uh I think the problem is the internet on his side, which is sticking. Okay, the Wi Fi. Bear with us a little bit. Um, this is a thoughtful, reflective man and a great uh, musical artist and compu composer in Trinidad and Tobago. And we need to know what he thinks and how he feels about his work and his life. I think it is important. Not enough work is done on those things uh, in this country. Okay, so we break now and we talk to him again. Welcome to Lifetime Solutions, where you can trust your roof to us. Our services include custom fabrication, steel framing, roofing installation, on-site roll forming, roofing maintenance and services. Call 223-ROOF or 223-7663 for a quote today or visit our website. website. 
www.lifetimesolutionstt.com Lifetime Solutions, you can trust your roof to us. Call 223-ROOF or 223-7663 for a quote today or visit our website www.lifetimesolutionstt.com as businesses adapt to the new normal, let Magic Mist take care of your cleaning and sanitization needs with our COVID-19 BSCAI internationally certified technicians. With over 43 years of protecting the health of our nation, you can trust us to ensure your building remains safe, healthy, and functional. Give us a call today at 638-6675 or 332-5522. Magic Miss Services Limited, your total facilities management solutions provider. Feel the joy and love this time of year with MCTV and U975 FM by donating non-perishable items, personal care for all ages and gender, baby items and toys clearly labeled with age and gender. Drop-off zones are located at RCN Office, Guayamere Link Road, Charlieville, five buildings after Holiday Foods, northbound. Super Quality Supermarket, three locations, Makoya, Shiguanas and Kuva. Drop-off have already begun and continue all the way to the 20th of December 2021. Make a difference this Christmas with MCTV and U975 FM. The universal message of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Join me 3 p.m. every Friday on Multicultural Television as we discuss the issues from the perspective of Islam and Muslims. Let us unravel our culture and our history as we cultivate peace through dialogue in multicultural Trinidad and Tobago. Time is drawing nigh. It is high time we face the reality only on Muslim reality. Welcome back. We are back with Ray Hallman and uh, we're going to continue the discussion. Ray, you were talking about, you were talking about um, your time at, at um, Fatima as a teacher. Yes. And well, you're... Yeah, go ahead. Yes, well, that time began in 1968. Uh-huh. Because I left UWI St. Augustine in 1965, and uh, I started to teach in 1968. And, you know, I was fortunate in, in the sense that I lived at about, let's say it would be like a seven-minute walk from my home on Hunter Street to Fatima College. And I liked that, you know, walking to school, and then I remember sometimes I'm walking down Damian Street, and then I would see Clay Stanton coming down now uh, to to go to the school, to go to his school as I used to say. I wrote and I said, Clay, this is your school. Yes. So it was nice to see him. He lived on Anna Street, so we lived, I would say, like a a discus throw away from each other. Not a stone throw, a discus throw away from each other. Yes. And then... Um, it was nice, and, you know, you're walking, you're senior principal all the time. He was, he was vice principal at the time because Father Ryan was, was the principal. But it was still nice to see him, and we always had a, a nice synergy. Yes. Clyde was a wonderful person. Yes, he was. I remember yes. him well. And, and you know, yes. one thing, I tried, I tried my best to keep him out of politics. Yes. Because... Uh, Unsuccessful at that because I knew he was so decent, and I don't think he was he, it, he was made for that the cut and thrust of politics and you know and all the, the, the slander and all the things. But I tried my best, but I feel I'm happy to see that he he did do a, a great job, and I I think the country needs more people like Clive. If we could have some more emerge with his honesty, sincerity, and, you know, good manners and feeling for people and for the poor. 
I think the country would rise to the level that it deserves to be at. Yes. So I enjoyed my days with him. You know, uh, he did everything to make me comfortable, to make my life less burdensome. You know, and when I started the steel man at the school, he was the biggest, he was the biggest supporter of it. Because, you know, in those days, we talk about 9 years, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, there was no need for that, you know, to bring steel band at his school, you know. But he was a firm supporter. Yeah. And the band grew from strength to strength. And, you know, we used to perform at the school at concerts and so on. And eventually, the mayor at the time, Mayor Lachmi, I think she, she was a sad, what a Spain mayor. He came to one of the concerts. And in four months' time, he took us on a tour to Venezuela. He said, no, I have to expose this thing. And the, and the boys who went there to... to up to this day, they are very thankful to me for the exposure they got. And so just, it, it was an enriching experience in their lives, you know, to, to go to a foreign country, to perform. Yes. We played at a bullfight. Some of them have never seen a bullfight since. I have never seen a bullfight since. And then we went to Colombia. So it, 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 it can enrich their lives. You know, these memories don't just disappear. Yeah, those are precious. Have, uh, sorry? Those are precious things. Yes, 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 yes. Just as when you... So we, are, we as adults have to be careful when we speak to young people because some of those things that we might see or some of our actions, they, they remain for a long time. And that is why we have so much delinquency in here because what some young people ex are exposed to in the first seven or eight years of their life it remains with them. Yeah. And it's difficult, you know, it, it's a job, we, the society has a, a tremendous job to eradicate those poor attitudes and the violent reactions, you know. Uh, the deception of con the res conflict resolution is a terrible pro problem we have here because they don't know that they, in the homes they came from, they didn't see that resolution in a peaceful and amicable manner. Yes. So they come into the world now and, and it's like this little problem. They draw a gun or they pull a knife. You know. So, I mean, Fatima, I think the boys had a great example in Mr. Pantin. I mean, and in all of the teachers, from Araf, the whole tone of the school, you know, well, the principal was, was, was uh, before Mr. Pantin, Father Ryan. He was very soft-spoken and so on. So, so they never heard abusive language or abusive tones, you know. And the tone of the school was different to QRC. When I came to Fatima, I felt a little out of place because, you know, QRC was more liberal. Yeah, good. Uh, we're going to have to break for the news now. But after the news, I'll come back. And, and just where you are there, where you are talking about QRC and your experience, I want to talk with you and to share that. Because as you know, QRC, a little later than you, was also my experience. And I think the perspective that you will bring would be very important. And if there are QRC uh, men uh, listening to it or boys in the school, I think they would be very, very interested. So hold on a bit. Let's do the news. And we will be right back with you and we will talk with you. This is Brighter Morning with Bo. I am Bo Tiwari, and we are talking to Ray Hallman, the great panist of Trinidad and Tobago. And we are talking to him about his life, his career, his values, and how he sees this society. <laughs> 